never comes to that. And we're live. So we didn't get Donato. He told us a few weeks ago that he was free for it. And he came back to me uh, this this past week and said that he couldn't. You know, a lot of things have piled up on his plate. Uh, it's no problem. We'll have him on a different time. He's open to, to reschedule for that. Next week, we're going to have Todd. Stay tuned. We thought we'd take the opportunity when we first devised of the art education idea. We I probably said this before. We we talked for like over an hour and decided that not only were we extremely biased about it, but we were also a little uninformed. We wanted like other people to come in and say, oh, this is how I feel, you know, champion it or, or deter people from it, things like that. So I think we're still going to – anyway, what's up? You got guys? it. <laughs> what's <laughs> up? We're going to talk about art education today, just the two of us. We're going to talk – you know, we, we've had some professionals on, so I feel like we can afford to be wrong now. Well, um, it's interesting for me because – even my ideas over the past three years since I've graduated on education have drastically changed. And even more since we talked to Pete last week. What, how have they changed? Like, what's a big thing well, for I'd you say that... I started, it was a very up and down path through school. Like, I started very excited to be in an art community. And then I kind of, I let the negative experiences kind of control everything instead of trying to make the best of the situation and improve. And I didn't realize that at the time. I was just upset. I was swimming. I was trying to do this art thing. And then I came back at the end at graduation kind of with a more positive attitude. And now I'd say it's even more positive. And um, I know what I would have done different. But uh, I don't think that you would have had a different experience at all. Um, I was pretty into the art community when I first got there. Uh, the year and a half that we didn't really know each other, and even afterward, like, I was always trying to participate in something uh, at our school, and I was, even with grandiose and what I felt were really passionate ideas about what the community could be, I was usually met with... Uh, positive enthusiasm with little action so and you remember how our baron allen initiative worked out where we were trying to expand even in the the local gallery scene of like classes and th i mean it didn't work because no one was willing to <laughs> do anything right and the other side of that is we were in a very small southern town which you know not a lot of people think of that when they think of art school and you'd think it would be a good thing because we okay so whenever i first went to delta state with they had these after school classes for high schoolers and i remember thinking like wow this what an amazing place the painting room which our painting room was this, this the whole second floor basically of the entire building just a big warehouse room kind of thing and um big windows and lights it really neat area and it was so chaotic and confusing and free that whenever I was in high school, I was like, this is amazing. The people here are amazing. All I want to do is spend my time here. Yeah, that's great. And then when you get there and you're going through the classes and everything, you're just like, all I want to do is not be here. Because <laughs> <laughs> chaos did not benefit education at all. It didn't. And I agree with that point, I think. I, I was always excited to be in the studio, even if it was chaotic, because I, like, that was the one place where I could just focus on art and nothing else mattered. Especially, I mean, the classes, I get that. They didn't come across like that, but when I was there on my own in the painting studio, it was a really magical thing. Yeah, that's what I would say, is, like, when you were in the room and experiencing that freedom, that that was really magical. But when you were in the room with 20 other people who were walking around on paper with paint on their feet, it's really easy to be like, oh, no. Well, I think that um, the, the free, you see a lot of art students now complaining or enjoying a more like free form approach to art education where the painting class starts with the fundamentals and then as it goes, it's like paint, you know, whatever, whatever you feel, you know, just get really explorative. And, uh, you know, I, 
I'm a big fundamental supporter when it comes to school like that. You know, you can be explorative in the later years. Like we had painting, what, four or five, which was I God. forget. Express just self expression and painting or one of those courses, and then that's okay to explore like that. But I think two, one, two, well, we three didn't have any more focused. We didn't have any. There were some. I mean, we we led with the like. Oh, start with a monochromatic palette. Like that's something that we led with. But uh, not in a man. I know Chad is gonna listen to this. I'm sorry. It wasn't a structural. Way. It was like here's a monochromatic palette. Let's go, you know, paint this thing. But there was never, and maybe it it didn't have anything to do with that. It was the idea that we were never told like this is what a core shadow is this is how you express an orb uh in paint or pencil or in media and those basic things being totally missed out were huge hindrances because you know i would be figuring those things out on my own or, or would have already known them and yeah. I, I remember I painted a guitar, and I was like, okay, I know what this looks like because it's kind of a box. And then, anyway, and then you would see people across the room that are, like, just slapping paint down on a canvas with just no control. Well, I I think of it this way. You, you're 18, 19, um, going into higher education. Any other degree path, they don't start you out in uh, what applied physics or some really in-depth, really uh, a course you have to have three years of study under you. They start you out in the fundamentals of whatever your field is. In every degree field, they do that. And I th uh, a lot, our art school experience at least, kind of dove straight into the, you're an artist, be an artist now. Right, you are an artist, not become and you know that can get philosophical but i guess what it comes down to is like create art don't learn art and well, was... you need the tools to create art and you need to study what the people did before you before you start to explore on your own because you don't know anything you don't you're a stupid 18 19 year old mm -hmm. no i think it's also a double-edged sword you know i look back at some of the things i did in college before i became more structured and i'm like oh that's really what I wanted to do. I should probably get back to that. <laughs> but, I, uh, uh, yeah. Well, like we, when we talked to Pete and even Duncan, you know, they said most of their learning occurred on their own and even in the settings they were in. And yeah. I think that's going to be true. Your school work is just going to be the core. And then whatever you want to explore and learn and develop is going to happen on your own. I think you're getting a little off topic uh we started with the idea i think what we're getting at is that we were <laughs> we had a passion and drive for learning so we were at the studio when class wasn't around i've said this before and then looking at people who weren't going to the studio and being like why and i think that the behind that was the curriculum wasn't preparing them to come to the studio that's um, that's true and in any field, you're going to run into people that are going to piss you off like that, being lazy. And half of it, you're right, was part of the curriculum. But I think the other half was also people who just thought they wanted to be artists or thought it was cool or were trying to get into that. That's so, why when Pete, when I asked Pete, oh, what would he say to his peers then now, whenever he was like, oh, I'd tell them to pick a different career, or different major that made me so happy because that's what I wanted a lot of people to be told. <laughs> well, that's like, oh, true. Happy. I started as a freshman with a fellow swimmer that was in graphic design, and he was very open and honest about it. He was just in it because he thought it was something cool that he wanted to do, and he didn't really know anything about it. Mm -hmm. And then after a year, he switched to another major, and that's great. But you get a lot of people who stay in it because it's easy. It's an easy A, and they think it's something fun to do. Yeah. I mean, it's just something that's, I think Duncan was really right about visiting your school. <laughs> well, visit, be, well, we talked to Josh, right? Be pragmatic, too. If exactly. you, in your, if you feel like the direction that you're in 
is not, we live in actual life. We're human beings and, we, and money exists, right? And bills. So if you don't feel like what you're doing is conducive to a paycheck, you might want to reconsider your life. I mean, I'm not saying that art, you sh it's the lifestyle, like you should be creating art and wanting to create art, but if you don't have the money or means to do that, then it's a failure. Yeah, or at least the passion to do it. I think you can have all the passion in the world and still be homeless. Well, that's true. The passion to pursue it and get better at it. Not the passion to just say, I love painting, but to actually do it and improve. Right. Make your, if you don't, and I guess, you know, I heard some, I was listening to uh, John Cleese talk the other night. I turned on the YouTube and, and you know, they do the suggested videos. I just, I just let it roll while I was painting. And one thing he said in his Google talk, which everyone should actually listen to, even though he's older, um, he found, he was reading and found that, so let's say you're good at something. You're, you're good at painting. Well, it turns out all of the skill, the inner skill set of your brain that allows you to be good at a thing is the same exact skill set that lets you know that you're good at something. And vice versa, if you're bad, at, if you lack the skills to be good at something, if you're bad at something, then you also lack all of the skills to know that you're bad at it, which is kind of hilarious. I think it's fun. <laughs> So if you, you know, the chance that's your ability to read yourself is so bad. <laughs> yeah. You know, you'll never really know if you're bad at something. And so people who are in art school probably don't know that they're not going to be, unless there's someone like uh, Rembrandt sitting beside them doing majestic and magical things with painting. Yeah, but now it's okay because you're being explorative and you're, you know, you're being an artist and being creative, so you don't have to paint like that, Alan. Oh, man. I guess Jackson <laughs> Pollock exists. Well, I don't know. Um, You brought up an interesting point that I forgot. Oh, that's fine. But, oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> Usually when you go to a major art school, I think you get critiques and you get some very serious professors who might be a little mean and say, you know, your work kind of sucks. You need to get something together oh, no. but our we went to a school where the critiques were very 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 gentle positive it was always positivity it was all which isn't and, bad you know looking back some of that might play into um delta state's history of enrollment issues that they still have what do you but, mean you know uh, ever since we started going there enrollment was down so especially in the art department. You don't want to kick everyone out. <laughs> I think the best advertisement a school can have are when people is alumni who tell people go to this amazing school. Yep. And, um, and that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that if you've developed a person who goes out and then maybe they have to suddenly they, they can't do anything with their painting. You know, they, they try some farmer's markets and you know, they never sell anything. Try they spend all their money going to galleries. And they, they never do anything because they're miss They're missing the core value that allows them their art to connect with people. And then they're stuck, you know, as a stock boy or girl, uh, and they can't have any time to paint. They're not going to tell people to go to your school. When I was enrolled, oh man, this is crazy. This is, I forgot about this until right now. When I was, <laughs> so I had done the after school classes at Delta State when I was in high school. And so it, it came in time for me to enroll in college. And I had to go, uh, my, my dad came with me to pay like the first bill. Okay. We're, we're going into the, the registrar's office to pay the enrollment bill. And, I think I had to say, oh, yeah, I'm going into art. There was a woman behind. I'm never going to forget it. It was a woman behind us. She was in like a blue kind of pants suit kind of thing, an older woman, maybe like 50s, 50-something. Mm -hmm. uh, and she said, oh, you're going into art. And I said, yeah, 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 I'm really excited. I get to start classes in a week or something. And um, 
she looked at my dad and me and she said, don't go into art. Uh, I tried going into art. You know, art was graphic design and art were like the next big thing in the 80s. I, I came here, I went to art, and I tried to get a job and it really didn't work out. So after that, I went into um, something else and then that didn't work out. So now I'm finally going to go into business. And I was so taken aback and all I could think was like, this person, why would I listen to them? All they've done is fail. Yeah, that's that's the great thing about art is most of the time, if of, of course there are ex extraordinary circumstances that might prevent you, but most of the time if you fall flat, it's your own fault in art because you didn't try hard enough. And you have to try really, really hard. And that's something else I want to say, like when you look, okay, this is something that I had to come to terms with uh, because I was looking for answers no one was giving me. And when it comes down to it, uh, it's really important for you to look into your school and the faculty because those are going to be your answers, uh, your answering blocks. Right. And what I guess what I'm getting at is in my college, I was like, uh, there was a point where I had to say, oh, maybe I shouldn't listen to them. All they became was a teacher at Delta State, which is really, it's not like a an angry emotion coming from that it's like oh there's people who are doing better art and doing making better decisions have, have made better decisions with their lives that i maybe should be listening to in this case i don't know yeah <laughs> you know don't maybe don't listen to your local farmer's market artist uh about what you should do with your art career but if you can contact james jean that would probably be a better yeah i i feel like we'll go back to this in every episode um, contact James Jean, but on top of that, contact your favorite artist. <laughs> yeah, contact your favorite artist. You know, I got a, uh, since Donata's not here, I, we had graduated college. You were looking into grad school, and I thought, maybe I should go to grad, you know, what am I going to do after college? I'll go to grad school. So I called Donato, um, who was kind enough to answer, <laughs> <laughs> and I said, should I go to grad school? Uh, and he gave me a really unexpected answer. Uh, he said, I was able to go to grad school because my, I think he said his aunt or something worked at the school he went to. So he got, uh, he got to go basically for free. And uh, he said, I would not tell any other artists to go to grad school unless they wanted specifically to teach. And it's like, huh? Right. That, and especially from an illustrator's standpoint, that makes a lot of sense. Right. And this is someone who like got contacts out of going to school too. So it's weird that he would say that, but I see where he's coming from. So what, how's about you reflect on your college experience here? Oh yeah. Well, I have before here. I, I went in thinking I wanted to be an illustrator because I had seen illustrators and I was really taken away on this wild ride of like being in Duncan's class and like learning all this different stuff about like the heptic sense and being an artist who's more true to themselves and getting kind of wild with my work. I mean, that really broke me out of a box and learning to enjoy abstraction. And I got into like politics and really, you know, the, the art kid thing <laughs> it dyed my hair. I mean, I was painting some stuff with ink and spray paint and going crazy. <laughs> Good time. And uh, then I felt really disillusioned because I was not getting any better uh, at what I wanted to do. I thought that if I went down this road, I would eventually come out on the other side because I'm only being affected by this art, right, and this art school. And I was like, oh, this is what you do. This is what all my favorite artists did, of course. And boy, was I wrong. <laughs> so I came out of a rut on the other end thinking like, I gotta, I gotta do something. And I still had this love for abstractions. So I tried to mix them and I'm still trying to do a little bit of that. I'm, I'm still recovering. <laughs> <laughs> still recovering. <laughs> no, I, I guess I can. And, and I came out of the other side with a newfound respect for, uh, teaching myself, learning. I, I learned that I could only teach myself to grow at a certain point. 
I don't know. I my if you want me to break it down, I could say I went in with great hopes and was disappointed, and then had to lift myself back up. There were some golden moments, definitely, but I think those all came from like my my own personal experiences uh, that I don't think anyone else could emulate. Right. What, what about you? Me, man, I. Looking back, I think I had the best possible experience I could have. But I went in, of course, wanting to go into graphic design, <clears throat> switching to painting, falling into the Duncan trap, which was a great trap for me because I had a really, really narrow view of art and design and the whole field, really. And Duncan and Michelle opened me up to all of the possibilities and what being an artist was really about. And Michelle, especially what I meant to be a contemporary artist and uh, showing me all of the possible work that was out there. But I think I, you talked about Josh talking about being pragmatic. I definitely, that's why I won't say anything negative about my education is because I myself was definitely not pragmatic until my senior, junior and senior year, late junior year, I started staying extra hanging out with duncan i wanted to learn how to stretch canvases i said please teach me he stayed and taught me after class one day and uh i was really it's something i learned from you honestly because i saw you cranking out all of this work and you were knew everything about your pigments and your mediums and you knew all the really technical stuff about painting and i was like man i i think i need to devote some time to this so i learned how to make stretchers and stretch the canvas and do all of that and that was really monumental for me I think moving forward I went in to art school blind I think and I came out you know not knowing all that I wanted to know but um, sort of enlightened on the field yeah maybe that's a good way to put it more really what you're going into is you're going in blind and you're coming out with uh answers to questions you didn't even know to ask and i didn't have it like i had only had one art class in high school so i didn't have expectations i didn't know what was going to happen so anything was better than what i had yeah i grew up in rural miss cleveland mississippi and uh we lived far out of town the only artists i was aware of are the ones we learned in renaissance history I, until i got to art school i was i I assumed that Michelangelo was the best painter that had ever lived. And I remember Duncan in my freshman year being like, well, have you, you know, Rembrandt's work. And I was like, no, because <laughs> I'd never heard of Rembrandt before. I, I had never heard of any artist. I didn't even yeah. know who Picasso was. I mean, I was really didn't know anything. Um, well, would you say, I would say that for us, the summer classes are really what did it. Uh, because, oh, yeah. I recommend summer school to anyone. It's weird because you're going all year to art school and it's like, oh, I have two hour classes Monday, Wednesday, Friday uh, in painting. And then I remember the first summer school thing, talking to Duncan about it. It was like, oh, you mean I get to take six hour classes every day for the same amount of credits? That sounds great. <laughs> right, it was beautiful. We just stayed there all day in one class. Oh, I miss it so much. I would say that's really the answer we want to give to people about art school is like s spend six to spend. I used to say this to people. I don't know why I stopped. Spend eight hours painting and then tell me how you feel on the spend eight hours painting. Do that for a week. If you've never done it before, come out on the other side and tell me how you feel. And if you loved it and you loved what you've done, then you should be an artist. Yeah. Cause I bet Someone who's going into college has never spent eight hours doing the thing that they want to major in. And that's really what's important. Because I saw people in summer school kind of goofing around. Oh, yeah. Anyway, there is one summer uh, where they're like, hey, give some critiques. And you have to give your critique as a poem because we're all about positive critiques here. <laughs> so Bear and I would go to the quick stop. <laughs> and we just blew it. There were plenty of times we blew it off. Absolutely. The kind of woo-woo stuff. We would do that a lot. Well, that's the good thing about being a college student is you're a college student. You can still have some fun. 
Oh yeah, there's that famous. We're sitting in. Uh, we would go to Chick Fil A every morning because <laughs> it's it's art class. It was such a free curriculum. We could leave an inner class on a whim. Um, oh yeah, you could just walk out of there. So we're sitting in the union one day. You're, one of your people come up, and, and they, one of your friends come up, and they say, "Aren't you supposed to be in class?" I just look at him and say, "I am in class." <laughs> I am in class. I'm never gonna forget that. <laughs> So that's, that's how I was to do it. I am. I'm. I remember the. I skipped two weeks of painting class once. And it's just, just two weeks. That's six classes. I, I had six classes with just no work, and I came out of that class with a C plus. And I really struggled to get that C plus, as in <laughs> it, I really had to try hard to get less than a B. So well, I guess, yeah. It's every every college you go to, there's going to be one or two bad apples in the program as far as professors go, and that's true even outside of art. Like, you're not going to get 100% every time you go anywhere. So right. <clears throat> don't Work. choose an art school with the expectation of everyone's going to just fit my plan perfectly because that's not the case. Yeah. Well... Being an artist is such a selfish and personal thing that no one should fit your ideas. If you're the kind of person who wants to hang out all day until an idea comes to them, which is not a bad thing, if that's how you need to experience inspiration and, and your art, no one else is going to be like that, you know? I agree. Um, I think the key for me in art school is opening up because as a freshman, I was really closed off, and I was really closed off to any new ideas. Like, Robin was trying to introduce me to uh, Dali and all the surrealists, and then she was trying to introduce me to the abstract expressionist, and I wasn't having any of it. But then after that, my sophomore year, I started to look into it and do the reading and look at the work, and it was something I came to greatly enjoy. Yeah, and that goes back to, like, art school kind of opening you up to things you really didn't know. I remember we went, I had never cared for Dali because the only one you're aware of are like his clocks, right? His melting clocks or something. Right. Um, and we went to the Brooks uh, on a whim, the Brooks Museum <laughs> in Memphis, and there was an entire Dali exhibit, just hundreds of papers that he yeah, had, had inked all on. of his ink sketches of uh, Don Quixote. And that for me was like, wow, what a, what a, what a damn master. <laughs> <laughs> he really was. Uh, what are we talking about? I don't know, man. Education. <sighs> what would you say to a younger you? If you could talk to freshman you today, what would you have said to him? Try harder. <laughs> That's all that matters. Anywhere you go. Even you talking about teaching yourself. Try hard. Yeah, I should have. I really should have tried harder. I wasn't doing anything this first year or two. I thought I was. It's not about being self-taught. I remember one night going in to work on something. It was near finals at the end of the semester, and Duncan told the class, you know, I'll be in the studio every day this week until midnight. So if you want to come anytime, I will <laughs> help true. you do anything. And I was, I was in there every night because I was working on a sculpture, and I was stretching canvases, I was doing a few things. And... Uh, he was there, and it was just me and him, and he was so sad because no one wanted to put in the time afterwards because that's your homework in art school. You don't get assignments. Your homework is to be in the studio when you're not in class. Yeah, if you're only spending three hours of an entire week, and you know that people had so much free time in college. If you're only spending the class time to do work, you probably don't really want. That's what did it for me. You probably don't want to be an artist. Actually. It's true, and I see, I see a lot of pictures, and I talk to some people now that are there, and there is a lot more activity after hours, which I'm happy about. But I mean, it's so important. Yeah. Even you, even when you couldn't be in the studio, you were at home working. You had your oh, whole paint like, set up there. Well, I'm crazy. I want to be working right now. Whenever I'm, whenever I latch, I'm like a. Leopard. If I bite something, I just really don't let go. 
I want to be working. I was antsy all morning because I had to go to the gym and get the old change in the car. And I was ready to be in the studio when I woke up, you know? Yeah. That that's is the, the worst. exciting. When you get to that point as an artist, it's exciting, I think. I need to start taking that advice from Hemingway where he was like, um, I always stop when I know what to do next because then I'll have something to come back to tomorrow. Exactly. Because I hate sitting down. I mean, I love sitting down in front of the painting, but then you're like, okay, what do I do now? I need to, that's just talking. Hmm. Education. I just thought, uh, we both took that digital illustration class. Which <laughs> what class? I expected that, but um, <laughs> something I, I would encourage people to do that I did was take some courses outside of your field. Like I took graphic design with Nathaniel and it was one of the most important courses I took. I learned more about composition than I ever had. Yeah, I would really highly recommend that. I was always interested in other things, but especially my senior, our senior year when we had, could just play around with credits. We, I mean, I went into mythology and modern literature, which were both English classes and just those two things are as separate as you can get. And it was like, wow, I'm learning a lot. I really, it's affecting me a lot. I love it. Yeah, I would. You're at a university. I would say you can explore outside of art. I, um, I took philosophy because I had to, but I wish I had gone into philosophy too, and maybe, um, some more literature courses there. I think that would have helped me expand on some ideas early on. Yeah, yeah. You never know what thing you're gonna find. You know, uh. This is not philosophical at all, but you don't know what you don't know, right? <laughs> so there's a very good chance that you could take History 3 and you learn about more in depth about the French Revolution. And that's the thing that drives you to making successful art. Yeah. And history, that is, the history course we had with, um, what was his name, Dr. Glenn? That was Dr. one of the best Glenn. courses and best professors I'd ever had. Which did actually drive me into art because I loved it. And I'd always loved history, but learning more about it drove some of my paintings. I actually did a painting of a portrait painting of him. Remember that? Yeah, it was great. It was fun. In front of the world map. That's the thing about college is you, you know, you're trapped there, but you're trapped in a place of like infinite knowledge. Even though some of the professors are shit, the information's there. And well, if you're stuck there, you might as well take some courses you actually care about. If you're an artist uh, and you're in a class, you're not sketching a lot while you're in that class. <laughs> uh, change majors. But no, I, I was going to say I, I took another history class with another professor, and he hated me sketching during his class. And one day he would ask me a question, which no one in our class would know the answer to. I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I don't want to toot my own horn, but I'm really good at history. <laughs> So maybe not math. I love history. So anyway, he says, well, Alan, well, Mr. Morris, no one can do two things at once. And I looked up and was like, well, maybe you can't. And then I dropped out of that class the next day. It's like, if I can't sketch while I'm in this class, you're not Absolutely. doing anything for me. I think um, our English composition teacher had the best response to that. Sarconi. Was I sketching in her class? Yeah, you sketched in that class every day, and one day she called you out on it, but she said, does it help you focus if you sketch? And you were like, yeah, I mean, it's the only way I can listen. And she said, then that's fine. I don't care. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I did some really good drawings in her class, too. And she just went back at it. <clears throat> that's true. If it helps you focus, and it does. I mean, depends on how you soak in knowledge. Back to it expanding outside of your coursework um you cannot i th i wish i'd taken like a photography course um i took a sculpture course i took ceramics oh that's a good do you think so your sculpture course was a notoriously bad example of a class um it was really really unstructured in a purely <laughs> objective terms like what all right you know be subjective like the people in the class they were not well, they were like the. It was a course where there was one sculpture major in the class. Um, I was interested in sculpture because uh, Duncan encouraged me to take it to help my drawing, which I did. And uh, the people in there that weren't sculpture majors were just taking it 
for an elective easy A, but they were also art students, and they were all buddies. So they spent the whole time uh, sculpting, catching up on, you know, whatever's going on in the art life. So it was a course of little instruction and a whole lot of disruption. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just a lot of noise. Anyway, so... I had so I had a point to asking you about that class. Oh, th did that class offer you any benefit? I think so I because I still got to work with the material. I I think anytime you get to work with other materials is important, and I learned how to weld, which uh, was very important to me. I um, I built a furnace by myself and one other person, which I thought was great. Um, Working with metal and working with steel and wood was a lot of fun for me. And I barely did one bust in clay, which I wish I had gotten to focus on. Yeah, more. that was a but good, good one. I liked that one. It was nice because I think painting, I was at the time, I don't know, working on whatever, working figuratively, working in the painting medium, and then switching to something like, well, here's some pieces of metal. How about you weld them together? Like, it it completely challenges your creative thinking. Yeah, that's a really good point. Do things all the time that challenge your creative thinking. Even if you're, like, throwing curveballs at yourself and painting and being like, you know, I've never painted highly reflective metal anymore, so in this painting of... Uh, my mom, I'm going to give her a highly reflective necklace or something. Like, do do weird stuff all the time. Make yourself uncomfortable, because that's where problem solving happens. And I think that's what happened in college all the time. That's why we're pushing this so hard, because you would take that... It, it, you, at the time, there was a certain percentage of your brain that was like, oh, I know how to paint. I've done this a hundred times. But doing the sculpture work forced you to forced yourself to be in a problem solving mode that you would then take back to painting and say wait maybe i don't know how to do this because i just did something i didn't know how to do no exactly and then also you're working three-dimensionally and um in reality instead of make creating the illusion of the third dimension you're actually working in it and creating something that has form and shape mm -hmm. and weight so being able to understand something in 3d space and create it and then go in to a painting and say, I know what this looks like from all angles now. It, it makes a lot more sense. Well, artists throughout history have had to be kind of, we, we kind of have to be Renaissance. We all have to be kind of Renaissance man because it's like, okay, guess what? How do you paint architecture? Guess what you have to know? <laughs> you have to no, know very true. about architecture. Um, that's a great point that Rothko made. Is the artist is the philosopher, the engineer, the architect, mm. the physicist, the all of it. So, I mean, if I were to tell you, if I were to commission you and say, oh, paint, paint me a welder, you would have so much more, and that's just objective, but like paint me a welder and you would put in more information than I ever could because you know just basic things about like, well, would the welder be sweating? I don't know. What would he be wearing? I have no idea. Um, yeah, and let me tell you, when you're behind there with the mask on and the welder in your hand, it feels awesome because there's sparks flying everywhere. You're working with metal. Oh, man, it's a good time. <laughs> we'll, uh, it all adds to the painting. The pain? The painting. Oh, God, okay. It's true. Take that um, excitement back to the bedroom, huh? Well, what I wanted to talk about is you didn't go to grad school, but one thing you did do was go to smart school. Oh, yeah, don't do that. <laughs> I've talked well, about that before. I think that you and have. something I came to learn later is not smart school in particular, but once you're, or, you know, in any situation, you should surround yourself with people that in circumstances that not only challenge you but benefit you um i probably have gotten very distant from a lot of friends that were just kind of coasting along with their lives and, and that's just relationships but when it comes to school or learning or career you should be around people who are willing to invest the same smart school gave me the opportunity to learn with the 
good professor and uh, professional, right? But what it really did was put me in a position where I had heavily invested along with everyone else in the class uh, actual money into myself because you're not, yeah, you're giving it to the professor in the program, but you're really investing in yourself and you're around people that did the same thing. Totally. And you know, that goes back to anything, you know, if, if you're friends with people who like veg out and play video games all day, that's not helping your career. It's really <laughs> not, it's a really selfish thing to say, but it's true. It is. I totally agree. Um, so would you say a, a plan for an illustrator, let's say an education plan for an illustrator, and this is what it, just watching you, I would want to do is pick an undergrad that you can afford and get into and maybe pick up some scholarships, go there, go to art school for four years, and then immediately when you get out of art school, if you've had the opportunity to save up some money or maybe you're going to work and save up some money, Go to something like Smart School or one of these workshops that all of these illustrators are putting on. Mm -hmm. Would you say that that would be? No, I wouldn't do it immediately. I had a year in between, and I would actually. It was 2015. I would say that 2015, the year between when I graduated college and got into Smart School, which was March of 2016, was the most developing year of my entire career as an artist and, and personally as an artist because what that year, what that time out of school does, and I'm sure maybe you experience this too, is it puts you in a space that seems like you're floating. I'm out of art school, what do I do? You know, you try and apply for jobs, you try and send your paintings out, you realize like, oh, my paint, you have to, it, it forces you to personally critique yourself, which I bet you're not actually doing in college, because I thought I was and I wasn't. Yeah. And being able to say, okay, my work's not as good as I think it was, because I suddenly, I'm in this pool where my competitors are the people I admire. And um, I had to basically, and Duncan said the same thing, when I was out of school, I had to basically unlearn everything that I thought I knew and relearn it again. Yeah, uh, relearn what I thought I what I wanted to know again. So I would say, if you're coming out of school, it doesn't have to be a year. Take six months and just paint. Figure out you figured out the knowledge part. Now figure out who you are. And there's no right. better way to do it than locking yourself in a room and painting. Which is what happened. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did it, you know, kind of go into a seclusion of sorts. A lot of work came out of that. A lot of work. <laughs> because if you're by yourself and all you want to do is paint, that's where you know you know which direction you're headed. That made me think, um, Delta State wasn't a very good match for you. And I uh, think that's so. an important thing. Because you I'm you always wanted to be an illustrator. Man, I think it was a good match for me. I always want to give it so much flack, but it was a really good thing for me. I wouldn't be where I was if not for Delta State. And, and I'm not anywhere. But That's true. I felt that abstraction come through like I talked about. I, w I had the ability to let loose. If I had gone to an atelier, which is strictly teaching how I should paint and not what I should paint, I would I would be even more lost, I think. I would know how to paint better. That's true. Um, I, even I'm guilty of not thinking about it. Like just now, um, knowing what to paint is kind of a big deal, unless you just strictly want to be a commercial artist and people tell you what to do. But knowing what to paint is really important. And you're right. We did learn quite a bit about that. Yeah. I, I loved when, if you've never painted music, you should do that. One time Duncan came in with a stereo, put on some music and said, paint whatever you see when you close your eyes listening to this music. Let it really, just really feel it out. And uh, if you've never done that, you should do it. But those were the high times. And then those taught me something. And then in the really low times where I wasn't feeling very inspired or, or like I was being taught at all, that's when I set out on my own to teach myself. And those two things came together in a really good way that allowed me to right out of school kind of start moving forward. Right. 
if we had had an, a grade structure, a better structured school, all that gives you is like, here's an assignment, give me a grade. And that's how everyone else was seeing it. And I bet when they got out of school, they were like, whoops, there's no one to give me an assignment anymore. I guess I, uh, huh. Yeah. Um, damn, I'm having, I'm having a lot of nostalgic thoughts about school now. <clears throat> yeah, this is the nostalgia episode, so we should call it. Welcome to the nostalgia episode, everyone. Um, I'm Bear, that's Alan. A lot of people will shudder at the thought of painting the music, but I remember that very, he brought in the soundtrack to um, Black Hawk Down the day that I did it. <laughs> and it was really depressing, but you know, it's the idea of creating emotion out of something and um, again, challenging your medium and thinking in a different way. Uh, Duncan was all about exposing us to as much and as fast as possible. The day we painted with five foot sticks, the day we moved paint around with our hands just to feel it, the music thing. Oh, as long as we're talking about education, there were two sides to his education, which was that side that we've just discussed. And then the other side was materials. He was very serious about materials and um, the process behind it. Uh, he even had us make charcoal one day. Yeah, that was a good day. Or like making Conte crayon, which is just mixing clay and pigment. That was fun. Yeah, and he so left. Have those. They, they canceled materials and methods before I could take it, but that's one that I wish I had taken. Yeah, that was fun. Because like, if you've never done silver point or made your own crayons, like it gives you a totally different effect. It's almost like, you know how when you're painting in Photoshop, mm. taking a big brush and going over a canvas, that is almost impossible. I would say that is actually impossible to replicate in Photoshop. Yeah. Um, and in the same, because Photoshop is all about precision tools that always do the same thing. And that's the difference between using a pre-made crayon, Conte crayon, or one you made yourself. <laughs> you never know what it's going to do. Well, it gives you, I don't know, I've done some really great drawings with those things. And the oh, I agree. charcoal we made, I love that. And I think uh, tempura, he had the class do make own tempura paints. Egg tempura with egg yolk, yeah. And oh, then... Mad, man. Yeah. So, materials. You should be aware of your materials. I encourage art education. I think is um, I think the majority of high I don't know. When I was in high school, we didn't have Instagram. And, um, I mean, DeviantArt and ConceptArt.org were the only, like, large art websites that I remember at the time. So it wasn't as widespread, I guess, as it is now. Like, there's a whole lot of... You can access ideas a lot easier now, so maybe um, people are more informed about going to art school, but I don't know. Yeah, I don't think so. Don't I think no. that they exist in a realm where they can put out their drawing on a lot of different forums and get feedback that is on a straight line level. Uh, right. I didn't have the ability to get feedback, so I never really knew. Hmm. So if it's, I don't know, it's hard to say. I think that it's easier to be mistaken. If you put a good drawing out in the world, objectively good drawing, and you get a lot of really good feedback, but then you try and take it to a lot of galleries or art schools, and they're like, no, this isn't what we want. I mean, you would be very confused. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> you know? I think I'm it's confused. <laughs> no matter what I think it's important to go if you have the means if it's financially reasonable then you should always go don't go to the art institutes don't That's, go to the I'm art glad, institutes I'm glad Pete said that the first time we recorded our art education talk we it's forty thousand dollars per semester and they have four semesters a year so there you go it's not a good idea it's a bad idea and uh, go to I mean Pick any major state university. They probably have a really good art department. It's the basic. Yeah, they probably do have a really good art department. I mean, I, I, I didn't 
mean to give flack to educators. They're they're in good places and doing good work, but oh yeah, yeah. what what you'll find at most universities is um, especially you think Mississippi State, Ole Miss. We mm. went to school in Mississippi, but any school that is comparable to that, um, say you're in the English department, you got to publish an article once a year. Well, their artists have to be in a gallery show once a year, or yeah. the equivalent of that. And it can't be the teacher show at the school. They have to have their own solo show somewhere. Yeah, so they have to be working. But so, yeah, I, I, any school that teaches you the basics, go there. And you know what? A lot of people don't realize this. School is something that you're, whether you're taking out loans and you don't know it, uh, <laughs> your school is something you're paying for. You're giving them money, and uh, you have the ability to just not do that anymore and go <laughs> somewhere else. If, if you, after you learn the basics, if you feel like it's starting to feel really constrained, just stop. Yeah. Your, your bachelor's of art is not going to get you anywhere. Uh, it'll get you, you have having a bachelor's gives you a lot of open doors in life, so you should still get one. But if you feel constrained in art, I don't know, finish off as a business major or something like Josh. Uh, Absolutely. Or uh, transferring is also an option. Uh, transfer, yeah. I was a coach, so we dealt with a lot of transfers, and I don't know how many people do that just for academic reasons, but I think a lot more people should consider it for academic reasons. Yeah, if you feel constrained, get out of there in any way you can uh, because you stop giving your money fruitlessly is really what I want to say because you're giving I, it. Yeah. Money and time, it's worth something. So I guess I, I would say if you enjoy the school but you feel like you're not learning what you want to, be pragmatic, man. Here's, a, here's something that not a lot of people think about. When you are touring the school or looking at the school or talking to your registrar for the first time, say, um, how many of these credits transfer to other schools? Because I tried to transfer at Adult State and learned that only two of the ten credits that I had had would actually transfer. Yeah, which that's is a big deal. Terrible. It means that I was it meant that I was trapped in a school I didn't want to be at at that point in time. Yeah. Um uh, we saw that a lot in uh, the sports side of things as well. Yeah, make sure you're going to a school that's good enough to be accredited by other schools. True. What's up, Alan? What are you working on, man? We're, we're getting to the end of this shindig. What are you working on right now? Nothing. Update everybody. How's the gold star going? It's good. You know, we're talking about education. I think about the studio and working in there so much and how much I missed it. Like We need a studio. I, my senior year, my favorite memories are in the spring. Um, in Mississippi, it storms a lot in the spring. And going to the studio on a stormy like Friday afternoon and just working until night. And it was it's so beautiful. Like To me, that was the most joy I can get out of something. Yeah, that... Like I said, that feeling of openness, you can't beat it. If you're in a school where you're not working in a big studio, you should... I don't know how you're going to find it, but you should. <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's another reason I encourage any anyone that asks me to go to art school, I say absolutely, because at the minimum, you're going to get a studio out of it and probably endless supplies, which is totally worth it, no matter what. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, because I think even um, uh, University of Richmond, um, they're one of the top ranked art schools. You go there for painting, you get a painting studio and access to the building 24-7. If your art school is not giving you access to the building 24-7 out of the gate, don't go there. I'm no. willing to say that. I'm willing to say it. Yep, don't go there. You should. That's something that should be given to you from the start. The Ole Miss Art School, you had to have, like, a key to get in there after hours, and it's like, well, screw you. <laughs> Ole Miss, they have enough money to update the keypads. Come on. They didn't have enough money to do any of the, They're not giving the art department. The art department at Ole Miss was terrible. I don't want to go into it. Anyway. The interesting thing is I went to Louisville for urban planning for a semester, and uh, that's when we were doing our comic, and I was doing a lot of digital work, and I improved on my digital work a lot, but... 
after th about three months, I broke down and I had to go to own Home Depot and get some wood and start painting. Like I missed the studio and actually painting so much. I had to go do it. Yeah, you had to rent out a garage space where you live now just to have a Yeah, studio. even now. I, I had started this journey on the digital path, but I mean, you, right now I'm working on a large painting out there in the garage, and that's where all my focus is, and the joy is still there. And that's something, again, I learned at art school was how that's, much joy I got out of it. That's another thing, and I think, feel like I've said this before on the podcast, but if you so if, if you're painting, there's probably a lot of people out there that have only ever painted digitally or like drawn on paper. Um, if you're painting something, uh, one time in your life, uh, build a build a frame for a canvas, stretch some canvas over it that you bought yourself, uh, gesso it. If with gesso you made yourself, if you want, you can buy it too. Don't gesso <laughs> it. Work unprimed. Be yeah. hardcore. Fair works unprimed. His paintings won't last. But uh, yeah, so do it if if, if you want to buy some masonite and just just so that if you've never actually built the thing that you're painting on you should really do it it makes a great deal of difference i bet you have a lot more respect for what you do after you build your own canvases oh you have no idea that's why i went to duncan and said teach me how to do this because i was sitting there working on a pre-stretched pre-primed canvas you know from michael's or utrecht or whatever and i was thinking like I can make this. I can do this. And in doing so and learning, um, my painting process improved and I did gain a lot more respect. And uh, it's just being in control of the entire process is so important for me. Pete was talking about how much he loves the painting process and that's why he does it. For me, it's start to finish from buying the wood, cutting it, stretching the canvas, painting on it. The whole process is incredible for me. Yeah. <laughs> Something I never would have gotten into. I actually buy and create my own computers every time I start a new digital painting. I also build Photoshop from the ground up. Uh, I'm very good at coding. This is all a lie. <laughs> no. But uh, yeah, setting up a studio space is really important. I would. Uh, Oh, my studio space is a joke. Ah, uh, it's still a studio space. I would kill for my own studio space. It's the problem with getting out of art school is that you don't have studio space. Or money. What's that? <laughs> I don't know what that is anymore. <laughs> and that's the people in art school also don't know what money is. <laughs> it's the problem. Maybe they do. I don't know. You know, um, I think a last note I want to make is habit. Something we didn't get out of much out of art school, but we got out of ourselves. Habit and creating. Because like right now, I'm, the, the painting I'm doing has a skull in it. We've all painted the skulls a hundred times now, but it's just an example of once you've done it a hundred times, well, there you go. You can just do it without even thinking about it. Oh, I thought you were talking about a habit and lifestyle. Who cares about your lifestyle? I am, I, am I am a very meticulous person about my everyday habits. He, Alan is. I heard of a director recently who eats the same meal every single day for I, lunch and dinner. That sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think if you've never tried it, if you're not a habitual person, you should do it. Oh, it does uh, help. There's nothing better than... Because uh, <laughs> what you're doing is like just like you... I don't know, some people may not, but the set, you know how you brush your teeth every night, and I bet you don't remember brushing your teeth last night. You just kind of did it. Yeah. Um, the uh, In the same way, if you, let's say every morning before you start painting, if you're me, you have uh, two cups of coffee, you watch one episode of Mad Men, and <laughs> you make your bed. Making my bed, very important to me. I don't know why. And then uh, sit down turn on Photoshop, usually at the, ex or, or no, I go make some water, come back, sit down, and I don't even remember starting to paint. I just know that I did, because it's a habit. It's, it's, oh, I made my water. Of course I'm supposed to paint now. My Part body just does it. Yeah. I love it. 
Gold Star's going well. It's taken a small hiatus. I'm putting in a challenge. I was um, invited is a maybe a bad word to use. They're not paying for anything, but uh, invited to show at a very unfortunately named convention called Anglicon. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Doctor Who convention. I don't know why they didn't just call it something to do with Doctor Who convention. It's a Doctor Who convention? Yeah, yeah, it's okay. crazy. Yeah, right? Why would you call that Anglicon? I have no idea. I guess because he's a British entertainment. That's how I've they... never watched Doctor Who. Me either. Anyway, so I'm making the excuse to do a Lord of the Rings painting. So that'll be fun. A lot of people give me flack for being like a second-rate Donato, but I actually like painting meticulously, and I like Lord of the Rings. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm kind of out of luck here. I've had, for years, I've been like, okay, whatever you do, don't paint Legolas, even though you love Legolas. Um, I'm excited about the uh, fellowship one you're working on. Yeah, I'll have to share a picture of that in some way. Gold Star's going well. <laughs> I'll uh, get back to that. I don't know, I'm challenging myself to finish that, plus... I didn't realize Thanksgiving was this week is my problem, but I'm challenging myself to finish the fellowship in the next. It's not a real holiday anyway. Week and then uh, also tackle the next gold star one. I'm a pretty fast painter. I can paint a character portrait in like a day. So this you process knocked out these gold star ones very quick. This process should take me four days. If well, it I seems do like nothing but paint, especially with gold stars, you've worked on them. You've kind of gotten the. I guess style down for this Gold Star series, so you've started finishing them a little quicker. Yeah, the last one went really fast. It's because I watched um, Pete Moorbacher's videos, and I pressed the pause button a lot, and I finally, by doing that, I figured out how to use gradient maps. Yeah. <laughs> so I tried one. It did go quickly. It's good for underpainting. I would suggest somewhat that people... I know it's scary, but... Uh, I don't know, try something you don't really care about and then play with gradient maps and bring it to a finish, like a portrait. Yeah, I'm all for using Photoshop to its full potential. It's they're all there just, for a reason. They're so weird. <laughs> I'll have to... Well, I've got you on here, I have to show you. No, I already showed you some cool stuff. They are weird, man. I know. Who do we have on next week? Next week we got the Todd, everybody. Todd Lockwood. What does he do? Got Todd Lockwood. He likes to paint dragons. He's a great fantasy artist. I haven't met him yet, but I'm going to next week. Um, we'll see how that talk goes. Let me tell you. Someone tells you Bear's going to be sick next week. I'm going to be just getting after that, Todd. <laughs> <laughs> now he's a te he teaches in smart school. He's going to come talk to us about teaching um, and learning. He, uh, he's going to be neat because he had a real strange career you know he got out of he had a real meticulous we talk about meticulous art schools that one was he was like taught how to how to draw his own fonts in art school he went to when he was in school it was all about advertising by hand so when you talk he talks about like pikas or pixels i mean he had to learn all that stuff in life before he had a computer you know yeah which and it took him Till he was like 30, 40 years old till he got into fantasy art. Really uh, outstanding career, I think, especially after going back and looking at his advertising work and where he is now. Um, I think uh, people should definitely take a look at Todd Lockwood for what it means to be a contemporary illustrator. Yeah, yeah. So that's uh... that's it. Guys, we did it. We made it's, it. You made it through another Baron Allen episode. Um, this is real life. <laughs> if you would like to be on our show, if you have any questions, comments, critiques, or if you want us to talk about something else or get another artist on here, you can find more about us on Facebook, Hanging Out with Baron Allen. It's our Facebook group. You can email us, hangingoutpodcast at gmail.com. Uh, yeah, you can find us on SoundCloud. You can find us on iTunes. You can find us at our houses. My address is 20523, uh, 125th Street, Cordy's, Bonnie Lake, Washington. Bear's address is, let me get it here. 
just send people to your house. No, that's going to be a 14,000 toll house circle somewhere right. in Franklin, Tennessee. All right. My social security number is three four is four two seven six one nine two eight two. Uh, you can find mine online. Just Google my name. <laughs> I have it on my website. On the website. It's actually your latest piece. Uh, your banking account number. Is... My latest art piece was giving up my identity. So there you go, everybody. That's a really good... We can get in the MoMA with that. <laughs> Next week from the MoMA. You can find more of my stuff at almarsart.com. I'm bearislesart.com. We're really unique with our art names. If you don't have a website, actually, call Bear. Call me and go listen to our website episode and then send us all the messages. All right. See you next Thanks. week. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, send us uh, send us pictures of your Thanksgiving meals because we're going to be painting your meals.